In this video, we're going to learn about uh, the scroll effects uh, so that you can create uh, parallax effects, uh, smoothing uh, animations, uh, transitions, and so much more in your framer site. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep it simple initially, and uh, we're simply going to have uh, this uh, image uh, and uh, a frame uh, which contains this uh, background. You can actually repeat uh, this exercise by simply creating a rectangle and uh, another rectangle below, and that uh, should be it. And uh, I also applied uh, a linear fill in the background. Now, in order to utilize uh, the scroll effects, uh, as the name suggests, we're going to need to scroll through the page. So what we want to do is to select uh, the desktop uh, and uh, we're going to increase uh, the size of uh, this uh, frame. Now at this point, uh, I'm probably just want to bring these uh, down uh, just a little bit uh, so that we are going to see some of the effects uh, more clearly. And uh, what you want to do is to select uh, the main element, uh, which uh, in my case is going to be this uh, Framer logo. And I'm going to click uh, on uh, effects. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, a few different uh, scroll effects. Now we're going to focus on uh, the scroll animation, uh, scroll speed, uh, and transform. And uh, the very first one that I want to talk about is uh, the scroll speed. So as you can see, the moment that I click on it, uh, you're going to essentially see uh, this uh, dialog box, which uh, includes uh, very briefly just the speed. Uh, so you can adjust the speed from here <clears throat> and uh, we're going to see that in uh, just a moment. So if I actually delete this uh, and I go through the original, you can see that by default, uh, there's uh, nothing going on uh, in the sense that uh, this element is simply sticking to the page. But the moment that I select uh, the scroll speed uh, and uh, I increase the speed to say 100 and uh, say 75%, and I click on play, you can see how now, the moment that I scroll, the speed of this element uh, is uh, going to be 175% uh, of the original. So you can see how now it's moving uh, above uh, this uh, initial rectangle, and uh, this is going to essentially dictate uh, the speed as to how the element is going to appear on the page. So if uh, we speed it up, uh, even more and we go to say 250%, you can see how now the moment that I scroll, the element is quickly moving outside of uh, the viewport. So this uh, works uh, in terms of speeding things up. It also works uh, in uh, the contrary, so I can actually make the speed 50%. And as you can see, this element is going to take its time before it's going to scroll out of uh, the viewport. So this is going to be ideal in case you want uh, somewhat of a more stickier elements uh, in the page. And uh, you can easily do that uh, with uh, this uh, scroll speed setting. Now, the default position is going to be set to current. And uh, as you can see, it's going to match the current canvas position. If I set it to scroll, I can now adjust the position to the top of the viewport. So the speed option is going to be the same, but if I select, for example, top 50, you can see how now this uh, element uh, uh, x-axis is going to change in relation to the viewport. If we increase it to, say, a value like 55, you can see how now things are changing slightly. So this is going to be ideal for minute uh, adjustments. Now, another element which uh, I wanted to talk about uh, is uh, the scroll transform. And uh, as you can see, I can click on scroll transform and I'm going to apply both of these effects uh, directly in the scroll effects panel. So you can uh, mix and match uh, these uh, effects uh, very easily. And um, for the sake of this uh, conversation, I'm going to remove the scroll speed so that we can more easily focus on uh, just the transform. And uh, as you can see here, the transform has a trigger, 
which is going to be either on scroll, uh, layer in view or section in view and um, the, you can select uh, an effect so the from is going to be the starting base so from uh, let's keep it like this so it's going to be lower in opacity the scale is going to be smaller so as you can see here it's going to start from here and it's going to progress to this uh, um, variation here which is going to be 100% opacity 100% scale that's what the one value stands for and all the other values are going to remain the same so as you can see in the moment that I start scrolling you're going to see this element uh, that uh, is uh, going to grow and uh, it's uh, set to scroll so it's not going to have uh, a fixed point based on uh, what the user sees uh, in uh, the viewport and you can also change this uh, to basically a transform when the layer is in view or when the section is in view now the section uh, i briefly want to remind you that you can add a section directly here so you can uh, essentially establish that, that uh, point uh, and uh, also if it's going to be displayed uh, or start the effect uh, at the top uh, middle or bottom uh, of uh, the section now let's uh, briefly talk about uh, the very next one which is going to be scroll animation and uh, the scroll animation uh, essentially tells us that the trigger is going to be layer in view by default uh, uh, it can also be on appear, on scroll, or section in view, and uh, you can decide the starting point. Uh, you can decide if it's going to replay, and uh, of course, uh, the enter and exit effect. So, if you try this, uh, you can see that uh, now, the moment that I'm not seeing uh, this element anymore, you're going to basically uh, have it disappeared. And uh, the reason for this is that the exit effect uh, is essentially opacity zero, square, scale one, uh, and the enter effect uh, is uh, not uh, applicable in this case uh, since uh, the layer is uh, in view directly. If I do this uh, on scroll, um, I can see that the moment that I start scrolling, I'm going to have uh, this effect uh, applied. So my best recommendation right now is uh, to just uh, work uh, on uh, uh, doing some tests uh, yourself uh, with uh, these uh, scroll uh, effects uh, and uh, overall uh, try to become uh, familiar with the, the, the dynamics uh, by simply experimenting so take a, a frame uh, and uh, apply a background just for reference uh, and start experimenting with uh, these uh, different effects uh, because uh, the very best way to learn these is to just do it and uh, try things. Uh, sometimes uh, things are going to work out, uh, otherwise uh, other times they don't. Uh, and um, if uh, you're trying to replicate uh, a specific effect, uh, maybe a parallax effect that you're seeing uh, in uh, your favorite websites uh, on uh, Dribble or around the web really, and uh, you're having issues, uh, my recommendation would be to try and uh, send uh, a message either on the Framer Discord or their Framer official community and um, just uh, learn by doing because that is the absolute best way to master these uh, delicate dynamics in Framer.